Sjogren's causes profound fatigue, and according to a recent Sjogren's Foundation patient survey, 80% of Sjogren's patients suffer from fatigue on a regular basis. We spoke with current patients and their physicians to learn more about fatigue in Sjogren's. Here's what they said. I think fatigue is similar to pain. Mm -hmm. uh, it's complex. There's multiple aspects to it. It's multifaceted. Um, I would say we don't really have great medicines for fatigue. I, I would say, first of all, we don't have great medicines for pain. Mm -hmm. All the medicines we have, each one has its downside, and frequently the downside is not worth the risk. And so, like many patients, we don't put on opiate medications, for, for example. We're great in the short term, but in the long term, maybe not. Fatigue, also, we don't have great medicines to really help fatigue. I mean, you could take caffeine or something like that, get help in the short term. And some patients will sometimes use medications, uh, you know, that are stimulants to try to help combat the fatigue. Uh, but we don't have good scientific mm -hmm. data to show that this is really worthwhile in the long term. Mm -hmm. And so I personally try, tend to stay away from that and try to try to look at other aspects of, you know, what other reasons why the patient might be having fatigue that we can address. I like to tell patients with Sjogren's, not everything is because of your Sjogren's. Mm -hmm. it's, easy to, it's easy to think that, uh, but you know, sometimes the fatigue could be coming from other sources. So does the patient have anemia? Does the patient have thyroid problems? Does the patient have something else that's caused the fatigue? In order to best treat fatigue in Sjogren's, physicians have to investigate all potential underlying causes. Once we do the lab test to rule out those types of problems, there's still other conditions that can cause fatigue and show grins. For example, lack of sleep is a huge cause of fatigue and one of the biggest ones. Just simply having the dry eyes and dry mouth, that can cause people to wake up repeatedly throughout the night and then they end up having fatigue and tiredness in the daytime. So sleep disorders occur more commonly in people with Sjogren's, such as sleep apnea. So sometimes it's important to get a sleep study to see if they might have a sleep disorder causing the fatigue as well. And then the depression and fibromyalgia and anxiety disorder, those occur significantly more commonly in patients with Sjogren's syndrome. So it's important to identify depression and fibromyalgia and anxiety disorder and treat them with the, uh, those particular medications. As you will learn, fatigue comes in many forms and can cause great burden to our patients. The Sjogren's Foundation has produced many articles and presentations on fatigue, but one of the most popular is an article written by a patient that outlines the 13 types of fatigue a Sjogren's patient may experience. There's different types of fatigue. For example, there can be muscle fatigue where someone just feels weak in the muscles and they'll describe it as a, a general weakness of the muscles, difficulty exercising and doing their regular activities. There can be mental fatigue where people have difficulty thinking and concentrating and consider that a part of tiredness and fatigue. There is the type of fatigue that they'll describe as a flu-like syndrome and all of us can identify with this, uh, whenever you've had a bad cold or the flu and you just feel like you just have no energy whatsoever. Patients can experience bouts of mild to severe fatigue with no real warning. Learning to live with this fatigue can be a challenge for Sjogren's patients. So there are times when it's bad mm -hmm. and um, I have figured out like what will lead to it. I've changed my life a lot to um, not push myself to the point of being fatigued, but when it does hit, I also know how to give in to it mm -hmm. and just be okay with resting. Mm -hmm. There are numerous things that can be done to treat fatigue in Sjogren's. Physicians and patients are encouraged to review the Foundation's clinical practice guidelines on fatigue that include various self-care measures, exercise suggestions, and potential medications. Uh, just a couple of years ago, uh, there were guidelines published uh, which you guys, the Sjogren's Syndrome Foundation, <clears throat> were instrumental in getting out. And one of those subjects was how do we treat the fatigue of Sjogren's syndrome and exercise was the only recommendation that had a strong recommendation behind it because it has much more medical evidence showing that exercise improves energy levels in Sjogren's patients and it was the only recommendation where there was a universal uh, agreement amongst the physicians uh, who published the guidelines uh, as a treatment for Sjogren's syndrome fatigue. Adding exercise to a patient's daily routine is strongly recommended, as it has been shown to reduce a patient's fatigue. For those who don't exercise, I try to help them find a way where they can uh, get into an exercise routine. And for a lot of pe people, that's not easy. It's something they haven't been doing for decades. And so, you know, getting them into an exercise routine can be helpful either through physical therapy, uh, through a rehab specialist, 
uh, or sometimes just starting slow. Mm -hmm. I tell patients, uh, you know, you know, can you walk? And they say, sure. I say, okay, this is your goal. I want you to walk one minute every day this week. And then, and then after this week, I want you to walk one more minute each day. And you'd be surprised occasionally, occasionally, I wish it were more often, patients will take the advice and will, will come back to see me months later and say, Dr. Jor, I lost 10 pounds, mm -hmm. I feel a lot better, I got a lot less fatigue, I, I, I have less pain, and I'm walking like 60 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a matter of building the habit. Mm -hmm. In addition to self-care measures, some patients may find a benefit from being prescribed hydroxychloroquine, also known as Plaquenil. In a 2020 Sjogren's Foundation survey of over 2,000 Sjogren's patients, 58.8% of them responded that hydroxychloroquine helped treat their fatigue. Hydroxychloroquine or Plaquenil can help some patients with fatigue, but not all of them. <clears throat> if the fatigue is due to the immune system being overactive and causing the fatigue, then it can be helpful. Uh, but it, it's not as strong, and only about 30% of the physicians involved with the guidelines uh, gave that recommendation. The Plaquenil, the generic name is hydroxychloroquine. Uh, it's an anti-malarial medication. Uh, which sounds kind of crazy, we're given this medicine that treats an infection called malaria in, other, in order to help an autoimmune disease. Um, but the way that it, it affects malaria is kind of similar to how it helps out with autoimmune diseases. It, it calms down how um, particular white blood cells talk to each other. Um, we have uh, white blood cells called antigen presenting cells that go to T cells and these cells tell the T cells to become more active and attack the body in Sjogren's syndrome. Plaquenol, it calms down these antigen presenting cells so that they stop telling the T cells to be overactive. So the T cells, uh, which also activate B cells, they become less active and they stop attacking uh, parts of the body like the glands and, and so forth. And the nice thing about hydroxychloroquine or Plaquenil is that it doesn't suppress the immune system. So it calms it down mildly, but it doesn't put the person at increased risk for infections or cancers or things like that, which is nice. I've, I've fought it for years, but mm -hmm. I ended up taking Plaquenil. Mm -hmm. And I have found that it um, really reduced the fatigue that mm -hmm. I, I, mean, I, instead mm -hmm. of experiencing it all the time, yeah. I have it when I've really pushed myself too hard. Still, more needs to be done on the treatment of fatigue, and that is why the Sjogren's Foundation is working on developing new therapeutics for Sjogren's. We truly need much better treatments for fatigue. Um, you guys did a good study in 2016 asking about this particular subject. Fatigue was in the top three complaints of Sjogren's patients, but it was the number one area identified that needed better treatments for. 67% of the patients said that we don't have good enough treatments or medications. Unfortunately, as is common with numerous Sjogren's manifestations, patients must find coping mechanisms and self-care measures to deal with their fatigue. Because I was one of those go, go, go. I was, you know, if, I'm, if I had a 40-hour job, I was working 50 hours, plus I was volunteering with my kids, plus, plus, plus. And I think I defined myself a lot by what I was doing. And so when I realized that I couldn't push the pedal completely to the floor all the time, I had to figure out how to not be defined by what I did mm -hmm. and be defined by who I am. Mm -hmm. And so um, I just started to um, kind of own the illness and be able and be honest with people that mm -hmm. you know I'm not going to be able to I'm not going to be able to do that this week. Mm -hmm. I can do it next week. Mm -hmm. And I would just encourage patients who are dealing with fatigue to understand it in terms of there's only so much you can do in a day. You're gonna have good days and bad days and some days you'll be able to do more um, than others and allow yourself that, uh, give yourself permission to rest as you need it and um, just don't overdo it. And I saw something described as the spoon theory mm -hmm. and perhaps you've heard of it by now, but it is um, uh, basically ex it explains it to the T where you are given a certain amount of spoons every day and everything you do takes a spoon. So um, as you're going through your day, some days the whatever you're doing might take three spoons and the other days it's one spoon. Mm -hmm. um, but you basically have to budget your day. Finding ways to cope with fatigue and Sjogren's is part of the challenge of living with such a complex disease with so many symptoms and complications. And fatigue is only one of the numerous issues patients have to learn to treat, 
cope with, and overcome. Unfortunately, as of yet, we do not have a magic pill to treat fatigue, but rest assured, the Foundation is working hard at developing a therapeutic for Sjogren's. To learn more about fatigue in Sjogren's and see our clinical practice guidelines, as well as our network of support groups, please visit Sjogren's.org. Thank you for joining us today on Exploring Sjogren's.